Have you ever wondered how those videos with smooth zooming effects and cursor movements are made? Well, if you are on a Mac, the answer might just be Screen Studio. In this tutorial, we are going to walk through everything you need to know to use Screen Studio from recording, editing, and then publishing. So let's get started. All right, first thing first, we're going to launch Screen Studio and you will see the main recording panel appear, as you can see here. Here we can start by deciding what we want to record. As you can see on the left side, we can select the screen part that we want to record, which could be the entire display, a window, an area, or even your iPhone if you have it connected via USB. Then we're going to select uh, our camera if you want, or you can also disable it, your microphone, and potentially also the system audio. In this case, I'm going to select my camera, and then I'm going to record the whole display. So I'm going to click display and then select this display. After a few seconds, we are now recording with Screen Studio, and here you can perform all the actions you want to perform and record. For example, we can click on this help menu and when we are done, we can click on the stop icon on the top. We are now ready to refine the video in the built-in video editor. The most basic kind of editing you can do in Screen Studio is trimming the clips. You can do so by dragging the handles at the beginning and at the end of a clip. And this could be useful, for example, if you want to remove the beginning or end of a clip. You can also remove parts inside of a clip by choosing the scissors and then clicking where you want to cut. As you can see, we now have two clips and we can use the familiar handles that we used before to basically trim the clips before and after. After trimming is done, we are now ready to use the most popular Screen Studio feature, the zoom in effects. So as you can see, Screen Studio automatically generated a zoom clip for us, the blue one you see at the bottom, which basically controls how the screen will be zoomed in. In particular, you can see that before the blue clip, the screen is not zoomed in, and as I transition inside the blue clip, the screen will be zoomed in. What this means is that, for example, if you want to make the zoom in shorter, you can just trim the clip like we did before with the video, and you can also move the zoom in around. The idea is that where the zoom clip will be, the screen will be zoomed in. And by default, the screen will be zoomed in to include the cursor, as you can see right now. Now, I personally don't like to overdo zoom in effects because they can be a bit distracting. So you can either, if you want to remove it, click and then press delete, or you can just trim it down to a duration that is not too distracting for the final user. Now, the second thing you might want to do is to change the background. In this case, you don't see a background or better, you see my wallpaper because we recorded the entire display and uh, it happened to have the same aspect ratio of the final video. Now, one thing you can do in the background is to increase the padding. And as you can see, our recording is now surrounded by the actual wallpaper or background of Screen Studio. And here in the background control at the top, we can control what kind of background we can have. We can choose gradients, a solid color, or a wallpaper from the Screen Studio collection. Quick side note. If you're creating educational content like product demos, tutorials, or video courses, then there's an amazing alternative you really need to hear about called Borumi. One of the things that makes Borumi unique is its scene-based workflow. You can start by writing your script inside Borumi's script editor. As you write, you can break down your video into scenes, which makes the whole recording process way more manageable. Each scene becomes a bite-sized part of your video, and when it's time to record them, Borumi guides you through them one by one. While recording, you'll see your script on the screen, so you never get lost. Moreover, you can focus on each scene individually, without having to nail the whole video at once. Once recording is done, Borumi stitches together all your scenes into the built-in editor. And this is where you can fine-tune everything. You can apply effects, trim the clips, and so much more, all within Borumi itself, without having to switch to another app or another subscription. And with Borumi, you get out-of-the-box, great-looking videos with transitions, animation, smooth cursors, and so much more, without having to do anything. You can also edit your video using transcript-based editing. This can save so much time when editing longer video compared to traditional timeline-based editing. And the greatest part is that Broomy comes as a one-time purchase, currently at $59, which makes it an exceptionally good value for your money. Back to the video. Another important thing you might want to do in your video is to change the camera appearance. So for example, I can open up the camera panel and here I can change the size of the camera. I can change the roundness of the camera as well as the position of the camera. 
Now there might be cases in which I want to have a full screen camera placement and so I'm going to open up the dynamic camera layout and add a full screen layout. And very similarly to the zoom in effects, what happens is that when the video is inside this layout clip, the whole camera will be full screen. So for example, if I play now, you can see that we transition to a full uh, camera effect. And then as I move forward, we will transition back to the full screen effect. Another very common thing you might want to do inside the screen studio is to customize the cursor, which is what draws the attention to the videos. So you can open up the cursor panel and here you can control the size of the cursor, as you can see here, as well as the kind of cursor. You can also change a bit the behavior of the cursor, for example, the click effects, rotation, and also some other parameters. If you want to publish your video on some platforms, then including captions in the video could be helpful. Screen Studio includes this functionality. You can open up the captions panel and then select the model. Now, typically either base or small are enough. The first time you will need to download this model locally to do the, the transcription, but afterwards it will be very fast. So in this case, I selected small and then I'm going to generate the transcript. This will take a few seconds or minutes depending on the duration. And as you can see here, we now have captions inside the video. There are also cases in which you're recording your screen and you want to mask away some sensitive details. You can do so by using the mask tool at the top and then selecting sensitive data. This will open up this little rectangular box that you can basically drag wherever you want to I blur the background. So in this case, let's pretend that I'm going to blur corner. And then as you can see, we have the usual control layers as with the zoom in effects. And as long as we are inside this mask clip, the region we selected is going to be masked. Once you're satisfied with your video, you can now click export and you're ready to publish your video either on YouTube, on Twitter, on any social media platform you might want to publish. You can also create a link that you can share with other people similarly to Loom. All right, so this was a full walkthrough of Screen Studio from recording to editing and to publishing. And if you're creating educational content like tutorials, video courses and product demos, don't forget to check out Broomy because it can save you a lot of time and money. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more.